Hello, this is Mugetsu, and here we are with the stream for tonight, and that is, you know, Roblox. <laughs> you know, it's surprisingly uh, a good game. I didn't really think it would be this high quality, because again, last time I played Roblox, it was vastly different. I think that the biggest difference was that when I played Roblox, it didn't even support gamepads. I remember I couldn't use a controller. It forced me into keyboard and mouse and it felt like I said like uh, Minecraft put the clunk here. <laughs> but you know I'm glad that's not true anymore. Also welcome round cat. Okay give a moment. I'm gonna share the link as usual. Hello, this is Korea. The quest for Edward. <laughs> yes. Okay, I think that Roblox is updating. Huh. Because it wasn't doing this before. By the way, let me let me see if I can change it to English. <laughs> I'm not sure it has actually language options. I think that it's just speaking the, the native language of my computer that is Spanish. I don't think I can change the language. Yeah, no, no, no. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, I don't think I can actually change it into English, even if I want to. I guess I'm gonna have to look it up because, at least initially, initially, yeah, it's not showing me away. But you know, the game is like half in Spanish, half in English, so... Yeah, whatever. Sorry, uh, the message got deleted, this career. I saw something about the sleepy mama. Let's go see uh, if the merchant ship is still there. <laughs> well, only one way to find out. I think that we missed it. Yeah, it's EST. Ah, rip. Oh yeah, the bodies, I have them here. But you know, I can only have three squish mallows, so I have the original gang. Damn. It's gonna be five days and fifteen hours. Oh yeah, I think we made a mistake. It's not on, on Thursdays, it was on Wednesdays. Yeah, 
I think that there was a mistranslation or something because yeah, it's Wednesday, not Thursday. God damn it. Yeah, it doesn't let me use uh, a four of squishmallow. See? It don't automatically removes one, so I can only get three. Okay, we made two mistakes. The first one is that it's on Wednesday, not Thursday. Okay, at least now I know. Okay, so I could try to do more uh, Roblox streams on Wednesdays knowing that is the day. Yeah, damn. Okay, so I guess what I can do is probably I should hunt eggs to gather uh, the last bunny that I'm missing. Wussy Wednesdays. <laughs> Alright. That's a nice name, actually. I might actually use it. Okay, I need to get the easter eggs. Wait. I didn't even see easter eggs around. Oh, never mind. I need a total of 50. I already have 22. seen eggs underwater so let's see if there is any Hola Juan Calcetín eh, pues simplemente es eh, instalar Roblox e irte al juego de Squishmallows eso es todo realmente Okay, and Cam wants, wants me to fish. But you know what? That's also a good idea. I have learned that the best area to fish in is uh, by the river. So, in here. The problem is that, you know, fishing is profitable, but I, I can't make it look any more interesting on stream. If I just fish over and over to, to gather enough, you know, fish to sell, to make enough bucks, I can't make it look any more interesting. Pues si quieres agregarme, pero no es mi server, es, es el, el juego de Squish Mallows, literalmente. De todas maneras puedes ver, mi nick es Mugesu91. By the way, around, can, I think I can try to do both things. I want to... Max Godzilla out and get Edward. Ah, 
bueno, pues intenta unirte entonces. No sabía yo que tenían varios servidores. Okay, <laughs> it's not letting me. Uh, okay, ahorita lo checo con Hansen, porque no me salió, no la veo. <laughs> A ver. Sí, me voy a hacer 91. Intenta ver... A ver, voy a intentar salir entonces del juego. A ver si me... A ver si así funciona. <ríe> Does it show my profile? Oh wait, I got a notification. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, got you at it. Alright, let me get back to the game. And then we'll continue. <laughs> the fishing power reminds me of two games. Can you guess which games? Uh, I suppose that one of them is Animal Crossing. And I'm not completely sure if the other one is Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley. Well, I'm not that good at the dancing minigame. I could do the, the surfing. Uh, the mini games I have played them, some of them, but um, they don't give that much money. I was making more money, you know, metal finding or uh, fishing. Fishing is the, the most profitable. At least for the Godzilla Squishmallow, I need to fish because it needs a ton of cash. I mean, I need three Godzillas at level four. I already have. Two at level three, so I need three more at level three and two more at level two. So uh, that's gonna cost a lot of money. Dancing is more entertaining. Okay, I can do that, you know, after at least we accomplish the other things. Just now I'm seeing the chat. <laughs> I mean uh, the in-game chat. Okay, this is really gonna take 
a lot of fish. But also, they make a good money. I kind of did a, a little bit of a... I wanted to see how much I could get and... All the fish that it took me to level up from 42 to 50... When I sold that, I got like 44,000 squish bucks. That is insane. I need to get to level 60 for a better fishing rod though. But you know, this is the best I can have right now. Yeah, this is Korea, so it's not Harvest Moon. Uh, Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley? None of those? <laughs> the fishing is a little bit like Minecraft, but not quite. Juan Calcetín, la mejor manera de conseguir eh, dinero en el juego es pescando. La caña te la dan gratis. <ríe> bueno, la primera caña. Minecraft of the old web game Dragon Fable. Well, at least it was right on Minecraft. I did notice the, the passing resemblance. But you know, Roblox actually did it better than Minecraft, I think. But on the other hand, on Minecraft, uh, you can automate fishing. I mean, there is a shark squish mallow, so if they see me fishing, I think they would be just happy because, you know, that means food. I'm not sure you can even feed the squish mallows fish. At the very least, Godzilla and Cam love fish, <laughs> so they probably don't mind. Really? Goldfish squish mallows? Huh. Yeah, I guess they wouldn't really like that. <laughs> That makes me wonder, is there a Magikarp Squishmallow? Because that would be hilarious. an idea <laughs> you know a jar of those squish mallow will be kind of funny 
Now that I think about it, a Lugia squish mallow would actually work. Lugia does have a round belly. That actually kind of works. Lugia is kind of chubby. <laughs> Clownfish, anglerfish, tang, and pufferfish? Wait, anglerfish? Anglerfish squishmallows? Really? I mean, those fish are kind of scary, so... I find it a little hard to believe. Anglerfish squishmallows probably would like to see me fishing because, you know, they literally are bioengineered to fish. Blockfish? Huh. Anglerfish are squish mallow shaped naturally. Yeah, you got a point. But I mean, they are like the least friendly looking fish out there. Even a shark looks friendlier than an angler fish. <laughs> I think that pretty cool to see Korea a uh, general squish mallow <laughs> basically angry pillow <laughs> hola nefasto así es estamos de vuelta en Roblox y mejorando al mejor squish mallow del mundo que es Godzilla <laughs> Porque se lo merece el rey de los monstruos. Viper fish? I'm not even sure what a viper fish is. Is it like the, the abyssal eel? Because that thing is scary. That has a, a, a giant mouth. That thing is also kind of scary. You know, like. The fishes from the depths are pretty much Lovecraftian nightmares, eldritch abominations. La verdad, no lo creía yo nefasto hasta que me lo mostró el Roundcat. Nunca me imaginé que Godzilla pudiera ser un peluche tierno. <laughs> Una figura de acción, un juguete ba así eh, badas, sí. Pero un peluchito, no lo creí hasta que lo vi. Todavía muestra como que sí queda. It's like an angle, angle fish, but eel shaped. Okay, so I guess kind of creepy. By the way, I saw, you know, in real life in Walmart, there is a Pikachu Squishmallow, but there is no Raichu Squishmallow, considering that one actually has, you know, a, a round chubby belly, and it doesn't have a Squishmallow. Well, Pikachu, prior to the recent Regeneration games, it was kind of round. But I mean, Raichu is the one with the belly. <laughs> bueno, Nefasa, es una polilla de colores. 
Pero colores bonitos, se parece a lo medio adorable, así que... Sí. O hasta el Gotsuki, el Gotsuki igual sí quedaba como Squish Mallow. I'm noticing that it's taking a while to level up. I was leveling up faster earlier. But I guess I need better fish. Nineties Pikachu was chubby chubby chew. <laughs> but because of the anime they slimmed down Pikachu so he has longer arms. Huh. Yeah, what fame does to anyone. <laughs> okay, after I level up to 51, I guess I'm gonna sell all the fish and see how much I get. Because seriously, this is the most reliable way to get money, because metal finding is fun, but it doesn't pay off as much. ¿Cuál? ¿El Godzilla? Tiene su propia máquina. Lo que sí es que te cuesta Squishbox. O sea, el dinero de acá, del juego. Pues la verdad, por lo menos por el Godzilla Squish Mallow sí vale la pena, ¿eh? <ríe> Tan solo por eso vale la pena. <ríe> <risa> Oye, pero no estoy haciendo sin gastar ni un centavo Así que No, no hace falta Nada más es tener paciencia y ponerte a pescar Ok, almost there <risa> Seriously, Godzilla is the best Squishmallow in the game. Well, according to myself. <laughs> the only problem is that leveling up Godzilla costs a ton of money because you need three of the same to level it up. And, you know, that increases exponentially. <laughs> Damn, super close to leveling up, but not yet. Pero si tiene las espinas.
Si tiene las espinas. Bueno. <risa> Ahí se le ven. De hecho, hay un squish malo de Godzilla en la vida real que es de un verde más clarito y las espinas son verdes, pero sí las tiene. Es más, tiene las tres, este, las tres columnas de espinas. Ok, <ríe> we can see it here. Aquí lo podemos ver. Yeah, I love that, the round cat. <ríe> ok, let's go sell the fish. Okay, we made decent money. All right, let's go get more Godzilla squish mallows. <laughs> <laughs> sí, igual a mí me encanta eso, nefasto. Lo mejor es que lo tengo en la vida real y está igualito casi. Nada más los colores son un poquito diferentes, pero de resto está idéntico. <risa> <risa> en eso estoy de acuerdo también, Nefasta. And yes, Ron Cat, I haven't forgotten about the eggs. We're also going to be doing that. Okay, and here's the thing for the people that haven't seen it. This is how you make bigger Squishmallows. Ideally, they have to be three of the same so that you get the exact same Squishmallow. Just bigger. Never mind, I don't have enough right now. <laughs> okay, they want water, cupcake, and go home. Okay, let's go to the store. <laughs> uh, 
And also, let's get some eggs. Okay, that's not working. <laughs> Invisible wall, okay. Okay, I just need 13 more eggs. Okay, almost there. There we go, 50 eggs, all right. You know, the thing is that Godzilla is so big, I can mistake him for an egg. <laughs> okay, let's get the, the fourth bunny, the purple one. music, you know, the background music? Or... And now I got disconnected! Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> yes, okay. Bonnie time. Also, apologies about before. Uh, when the computer gets shut down incorrectly, it messes up the configuration for Streamlabs, so that's why I think it wasn't giving the, the game sounds. I have to check these things more often. <laughs> Okay, this is not gonna be so easy. How to make sure I get the purple one? Oh wait, I think that this one is... I'm gonna hope that this is the purple one. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that wasn't it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna need 50 more eggs. Time to get more wet. <laughs> that was funnier than, than you expected, Rob. <laughs> but you're right. We need more huevos de Pascua. Okay, that was rude. Just disappearing right as I was coming. Yeah, that was uncalled for. By the way, uh, for Juan Calcetin or anyone who wants to play this, yeah, don't buy apples. Just find a tree and shake it. You can get them for free. No need to buy apples. And also berries. No need to buy those. Okay, now they want water and a cupcake. So let's go. Okay, let's get water and a cupcake. You can see Godzilla has gotten really big. <laughs> well, I guess this is a wholesome world, you know, so people. Don't get injured. And I mean, Squishmallows are, are so soft. They shouldn't be getting injured by most things anyway. I mean, in this world. I don't think that there is anything dangerous in this world. I could do some 
metal detecting just because it's fun and you know it, it looks better on stream so let me just gather the seashells and then let's go and do some um, metal finding I feel like treasure hunting is probably the better name for the job The seashells are also surprisingly profitable, so it's not a bad idea to pick them up. I mean, if you pass by the beach anyway. Okay, I have to admit, they look freaking adorable. <laughs> like that. Yeah, this is just priceless. <laughs> Okay, let's go do some metal finding. So for this, we need the metal detector. And it's literally just walk around and maybe pick up more shells. Okay, before we continue with this, let me do something. Okay, there is a little trick here that... Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to get uh, Godzilla to wait in here. Okay, yeah, that, that is the exact place. Okay, now let's go find another treasure. Okay, now this is gonna make sense in a moment, okay? Just bear with me. And of course, now he wants to fish. Okay, I need to find a third treasure. Okay. 
Okay, now we are set. Now that I have, you know, the three squishmallows in waiting in different places, the idea is that the treasures will most likely spawn where they are standing. So you can just, you know, run back and forth between them and you should be finding treasure more consistently. And you can see this in action. <laughs> We're seeing this in action. So yeah, your squishmallows can actually help you make money. <laughs> Of course, there is a certain cooldown, but yeah, you can see, it works. <laughs> By the way, I learned that soda cans, you can sell them, but you don't really sell for much. The best thing that you can do is hold on to them and then wait for a recycling event, because then you can use the, the cans. So yeah, don't sell the soda cans. <laughs> this is too effective. <laughs> yeah, I know, round cat. And also, see shells, you know. They are surprisingly profitable, you know, for a uh, thing that you just pick up the ground. And yeah, you can sell them for quite a decent amount of money. It still doesn't compare to fishing because nothing does really. Fishing is by far the best for making money. But yeah, you can, ju you can just do this. You can run back and forth between your squeeze mallows and you can just collect treasure okay that thing the dynamite is the best treasure i have found that is the single best treasure that i have found Also, that you can directly dig up money. <laughs> that is also pretty good. But even with that, fishing makes more. Uh, let's see. Collecting seashells from the beach reminds me of one obscure game developed by the same company that made Chibi Robo. Okay, that was a complete curveball. Uh, this is Korea. I have no idea. <laughs> you got me there. I have no idea.
So, you know, if you want to make money and it to be, you know, kind of fun, entertaining, I guess treasure hunting is the best on that regard, but still, it's only the second best way to make money. And that is also collecting seashells, because that really helps. You can see that the golden seashells are adding up. <laughs> Any games planned for Earth Day this month? When is Earth Day? There is a game that is called Godzilla Save the Earth. That sounds pretty fitting for Earth Day. <laughs> and you know, Godzilla. Okay, let's see how much I've made so far. Still not as much as fishing. But also, now let's see selling the seashells. I still can't with these names. Emilio. Uh, all right. You see, that's not bad for an item that you pick off the ground. Okay, and also that is pretty good. Okay, so if you combine collecting seashells with metal detecting it's the second best way of making money in this game for sure but second at the end of the day fishing trumps over it <laughs> Okay, I think that was enough treasure hunting, so... Alright, let's get the gang back. <laughs> And I mean, we 
also have 28 eggs, so not so bad. I mean, that's over halfway through. <laughs> The 22nd is Earth Day, okay. Super Widget, Atlas. Well, I guess I could do that too. Let me remind you again about Captain Rainbow. Here's the thing, that game was only released in Japan and hasn't been released outside of the US. That's why it's hard to remember back then. Yeah, I didn't really have much contact with games that didn't make it to the US, you know, because Mexico basically gets whatever the US gets with a few exceptions but you know it's more often than not by the way around can <laughs> now that you mentioned you know huevos you know it's kind of funny because there was this operating system for like, you know, proto-tablets before, you know, the advent of Android that was called Palm Web OS. But when you see it, you know, especially as a native Spanish speaker, you read it Palm Webos. <laughs> that was always hilarious. <laughs> and, and the funniest part is, you know, most English speakers were completely oblivious to the joke. They didn't understand why it was funny. <laughs> yeah, palm huevos. <laughs> you know, also that still kind of blows my mind. You know that my understanding of you know uh, languages of the, in the U.S. pretty much got, remains stuck in the '90s. So my my idea is, you know, that most people in the United States know English. But I wouldn't expect like 90% of them to know any Spanish outside of something that they saw on TV or something like that. And then when I was told that a lot of people, you know, in like Texas, California actually speak Spanish, that did surprise me. I mean, I was also surprised, you know, like uh, by the Ninja Turtles, you know, Michelangelo saying a lot of phrases in Spanish. I was like, what? Why the hell do the Ninja Turtles in New York speak Spanish? That doesn't make sense to me. Because again, my knowledge of the US is largely limited to media. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Okay, I haven't found any more eggs. I need 12 more. Come on. 12 more eggs. 11 more eggs Nine more eggs Eight more eggs, seven more eggs Five more eggs, four more eggs, three more eggs, come on. Okay, get, getting close. More eggs. Okay, oof, two more eggs. One more egg. And there we go, there we go. Okay, 50x. All right. Time to try again. Webos was also on LG Smart TVs. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Okay, I really need to get the purple one. But this feels tricky. 
Okay, please, the purple one, the purple one, the purple one. Okay. And there we have it, the, the Bonnie Quartet. Yeah. All four of them. I guess I could try to level them up, maybe up to level 2, because leveling them up more, it's gonna be plain excessive. You know, finding those eggs is not so easy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna level them, them up to 2. But yeah, leveling them more is insane. I mean, even with Godzilla, it's hard, and the only good thing about it is that, you know, the Godzilla drops are guaranteed. Okay, let's go back to fishing, because I really need to make the box. <laughs> and also, uh, let's see, what do they need? Fishing, water... Uh, okay, let's go get some water. By the way, Round Cat, uh, I, don't, I don't think I told you. I looked up, you know, for a cam on Amazon. And, you know, there's the normal one. But that was like 8 inches, I think. There were some that were 5 inches. But there was one that has a sweater. And it's like 10 or 12 inches. And it was cheaper. So I got that one. It was cam with a sweater. I'm just waiting for it to arrive. But I guess, you know, the Sleepy Mammoth is gonna have some competition. <laughs> you know, another squish mallow of its size. And the stackables, because the stackables also kinda function like nice enough head pillows. But I seriously need a bigger nightstand. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to keep them on my hammock. Okay, let's go fish. Oh yeah, Godzilla wants water. That actually makes sense. Wait, what? Ah, what the coffee? God damn! I thought it was water. <laughs> okay. Damn, I was convinced that he needed water. Okay, let's go get some coffee because apparently Godzilla wants caffeine yeah big bunny <laughs> okay let's see i'm not even gonna question why a kaiju wants coffee Also, uh, Tito wanted me to fish. I don't think Tukens eat fish. That makes more sense for Godzilla or Cam. Okay, let's go fish for real. Smashing buildings takes a lot of energy. <laughs> the thing is, can Squish Mallow Godzilla even smash any buildings? Because I think that he would fail hilariously because he's way too soft. Also, Godzilla wants to go to the beach. That 
also makes sense. Uh, no, this is Korea. I have no idea because I'm not familiar with that game. Wait, really? I thought tokens only ate fruit. I didn't think they would eat, you know, meat. Also, with the way their beaks work, I don't think that they can really go hunt for insects. Yeah, I was sure that two can only get fruit. I have a hard time picturing a, a two can eating fish. They're omnivores? Huh. I also have a hard time imagining a token eating rodents. Frogs? I can kind of see it, but again, kind of weird. Fish? Most birds eat fish, that kind of makes sense. But... Uh, I don't think that the token's beak is actually optimized for fishing. <laughs> and now he wants a burger. Of course he wants a burger. Yeah, burgers are nice. You know, that is actually what I'm gonna be eating tomorrow. <laughs> Homemade burgers. So, yeah, I share the sentiment. Someone got cam from the claw machine. <laughs> nice. By the way, I'm noticing that the salmon here is kind of green. Kind of looks like a trout. Shouldn't it be red? Let's see, maybe Godzilla needs a, needs a boost of energy. Wait! The story of Captain Rainbow is all about a character who got stranded on an island and must find a way to become a hero children yearn for. Featuring obscure characters like one of them I mentioned about earlier, the reason why US and to an extent uh, North America as a whole didn't get the game Captain Rainbow, the sales flopped in Japan. Just like in Rodman EXE Operate uh, Shooting Star. The fact I don't even know that game tells plenty. <laughs> yeah, I just read the comments, this is Korea. You know, that is also kind of ironic, you know, Cameron the cat seeing me catching catfish. 
That about summarizes Captain Rainbow without the spoilers. That sounds like a decent enough game, but I guess technological limitations held it back. Yeah, catfish are pretty ruthless. I think that they they even have a, a champion in League of Legends that is a, a catfish. What was his name? Damcage? Yeah, I remember some memes about him. Also, it's been... Over a decade since I last played League of Legends. Well, in any serious capacity, because I in around like 2017-2018 I was playing TFT mostly. I wasn't playing League anymore. <laughs> I am surprised that game has existed for so long. I know that it's from like 2012, 2011, and it's still around. Damn. Oh, that game was on the Wii? I thought it was an older game. I thought it was, you know, like a Sega Saturn, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 kind of game. Well, I was thinking it was more of a, of a retro game, you know, like 16 bits or 8 bits. a retro console now yeah that, that really messes with my head for me retro consoles is up to PlayStation 1 up to PlayStation 1 I can accept them being retro games but PlayStation 2 and onwards feels too modern to be retro yeah damn Yeah, the, the passage of time is not kind because it still blows my mind that the Wii is almost 20 years old. Because that means I was in high school 20 years ago. I was a teenager 20 years ago. That, that almost makes no sense in my head. Damn. Well, N64 is, you know, contemporaneous to the PS1, so yes, N64 is also retro. I mean, up to the sixth generation of consoles, you know, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, that is why I normally consider retro in my head. That is the upper limit, because again, PS2, GameCube, Xbox, the Wii, they feel too modern to be retro. To me. Yeah, I know, but if you have read the Wikipedia, the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1 are both under the sixth generation of game consoles. Wait. No, they are the fifth generation. Yeah, because PS2, GameCube, and Xbox are the sixth generation because the Wii. The Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 are the 7th generation. Yeah. So, normally in my head, retro games 
is, you know, from the very beginning up to the fifth generation. PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64. That is the upper limit. It feels similar to the PS2, so it doesn't fully register as retro in my head. Nice, Juan Calcetín. I just saw that you got Godzilla. Congratulations. The best Squishmallow, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, you know, this is a chill game, so just farm and relax. Yeah, no need to get stressed over. We already have XDI for that. <laughs> but also, if you really want to make quick buck, you know, especially to level up Godzilla, get fishing. I am not kidding. It makes a ridiculous amount of money. Also, every time you can, when you reach level 30 and 40, and I think 50, get the new rub, because that pays for itself, easily. At level 60, I get another new rub, yeah, and that's gonna pay for itself with like the next 20 or 30 fishes. <laughs> yeah, Hogan remember it's important, you know, especially with the, sta the current status of X Dive, it's not worth it to, to burn yourself out over it. So, this is a nice change of pace. Though, I have to say that for once, Zero X gave Buster Mains a bit of a spike. The laser is surprisingly good, but it's still not completely cooked. It could use that extra 5 range. It really gonna, it's really gonna need it. Other than that, it seems to be pretty good. And UAX is also amazing. I just need Dax to be enhanced to, to match that level. And also Secret DNA. He really needs Secret DNA. I mean, remember that last year we were theorizing that X-Dive wasn't even gonna make it past Halloween and yet here we are half a year later so we won't know until it happens, you know it's best to keep an open mind and also, you know, kinda like prepare for the worst but hope for the best so I'm already trying to be, you know, like mentally ready for when the inevitable end comes. But at the same time, I still wish that Exact continues as long as possible. <laughs> for as long as it's possible. Even though offline is 
looking pretty decent with the mods and stuff. I already told you guys, the people behind the mod community are the same Taiwan elitists that witch hunted me back in the day. So I can't really endorse their stuff in good faith. I really don't want to support them because... Yeah, they're not good people. I don't even know if I want to get involved with offline anymore because uh, because of the people, you know, behind the mods. Well, I'm not really putting money in uh, X Dive other than, you know, the battle pass and the monthly boosters. It's not that much. Well, I do try to avoid facing all fear, and also, I want to make this straight, you know, in case there is a confusion or anything, or if anyone comes to, to check my streams or what I say, all fear is a jerk. I am not, you know, I'm standing by my statements, I'm not backing away, he's not a good person, he's kind of corrupt, and you know, he flexes his wealth. On the plebs. That is not a lie. I stand by it. But FDAC, even though you know his gameplay is annoying because he uses like the most toxic meta, he's actually a decent guy, you know, behind the screen. So the only issue with FDIC is meeting him in battle. But he's not really much of an issue on Discord. And he's a fairly chill guy, so you know, we have to give credit where credit is due. All fear is the only bad apple there. Even our top players, you know, like it was Speed, uh, Speedy. Yeah, they're not really that bad. So it's pretty much just all fear at this point. And the people that hate, you know, Dax Depot. <laughs> but that's something else. That is specifically against us, but you know, in general terms, yeah, all fear is the only bad one. So, yeah, I'm not that concerned about uh, FDIC because he's not exactly, you know, that guy. All fear, yes. Okay, after I level up, let's see how much I get from selling fish.
Looks like the non Axel White Day characters will never get buffed, so there's another rocket promise by Zero. Really? I didn't see any official statements. See if I can even uh, buy another road. Yeah, I can't because you know this is the first one you can get the metal road, and then you get the lucky road. I don't know what is the name of this one, but yeah, I can't get it. And I guess this is the final one. Presumably, this is yeah level 70, and the other is level 60. Uh, okay. Uh, still too short, <laughs> you know. Nine levels too short. Well, eight levels too short. Okay, time to get some more Godzilla Squishmallows. <laughs> Yeah, I am, Juan I am so much more of a gamepad player than, you know, keyboard and mouse. I only really play Age of Empires and a few other things with keyboard and mouse, but most... Whenever I can get away with it, I will use a gamepad. Even shooter games like Overwatch. I remember that my friends used to tell me that I should use keyboard and mouse, but nope. Controller is the way to go for me. The Super Nintendo controller layout is simply engraved into my heart. <laughs> By the way, I did check in the local Walmart, you know, where I live. There is a bunch of claw machines, but they have, you know, generic plushes, but no squishmallows. And even then, you know, I would still have the same concern as I mentioned that those are, you know, unsealed, so probably not uh, as clean as they could be. And also, you know, claw machines in real life are not nearly as nice as the ones here.
Yeah, it's way more comfortable. I just got the Age of Empire soon to play with a friend. We should play sometime. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. You know, I really love Age of Empires. And I don't know if I should play the stream. <laughs> I wouldn't mind like playing the campaign. <laughs> or you know, playing with, with friends on stream. That would be pretty nice. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if that is the kind of game that you should really stream. Okay, I didn't even know what she wanted to trade. Or he wanted to trade. Okay, let's see. I have, okay, three level three Godzilla, so let's go. The second level for Godzilla. Okay, that's a good point, Rome Cat. I'm gonna check if there's any squish mallows in uh, the claw machines. Okay, we have two tier one, two tier two, uh, sorry, two level fours, one level two and two level ones. Uh, okay, I still need more. <laughs> Dynamic Godzilla. Yeah, that's a good point, Rock Cat. So I guess I'm gonna check them again, but I only saw, you know, generic plushes, not Squishmallows. I don't think that Squishmallows are even widely known in Mexico. But you know, at least they were there for once. Okay, let's go on. By the way, a funny thing I noticed is that your house in Squishmallows is never in the same place. I have, you know, gone home several times and it's always in a different part of the town. Okay, we went home, and now we leave. There's a Squishmallow TV show, wait, what? There's a Squishmallow TV show? This is the first time hearing of this. Squishmallows are the most popular toy these days. Yeah, probably in the US, but in Mexico I'm not so sure. At least, you know, up until like three years ago when I was still teaching, none of my students ever mentioned Squishmallows. And they did mention, you know, uh, TikTok, uh, and before it was called Musically. Yeah, but they never made any mentions of uh, Squishmallows.
Okay, I know that I'm fishing over and over again, but really, it's the w the best way I can make money. And hunting next is gonna take a while. Yeah. That is a big thing. Also, let me tell you that for some reason, even stores like Walmart are not very consistent with the things that they have. Like, I might be able to find squish mallows this month, but it's possible that if I go, you know, the next month, I'm not gonna find them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, shipments are, are very inconsistent. Because again, this is a small backwards jungle town. So it's connection, you know, with any of the bigger cities is flimsy at best so we don't get nearly the same stuff than say Merida, Yucatan or Tijuana or Mexico City or Guadalajara because those are the the actual cities in the country yeah this is just a town pretending to be a city and not in a good way <laughs> I could try to get the Pikachu one. But again, there is also the concern that the ones on, on the store, yeah, are likely dirty. They are not sealed like the ones that I buy from Amazon. Or, yeah, I have been buying them from Amazon. In Mercado Libre also, they would be sealed. That is the main issue actually. And I'm not sure if laundromats can, you know, actually deal with Squishmallows because, you know, a lot of people are kind of ignorant. Yeah, that can be an issue. There is the, the real possibility that if I put a Squishmallow in a, you know, in a paid laundromat service, they might lump it with random people's clothes. So cleanliness is still going to be an issue because, well, kind of contamination. And of course they're not gonna say anything. Also, I'm not even sure if the laundromats have dryers because pretty much no one uses dryers here. Almost everyone does sun drying. Even people with money do sun drying. <laughs> Hola, Skyros. Así es, ando farmeando Squishbox para poner a mi Squishmallow de Godzilla al máximo. <laughs> ok, a ver. Ahí está, ahí lo podemos ver, Skyros. <laughs> Buen Godzilla. <risa> ya no tengo nivel 4, así que estoy haciendo todo lo posible para subirlo a nivel 5. <risa> ya lo sabes. I thought you bring your laundry to the washing machine there and buy a token to activate the washer and dryer. Yeah, that's the thing that I'm aware that that's how laundromats work in the US But the few laundromats I have seen in here are not like that In the Mexican laundromats I have seen You bring your clothes You pay for them to be washed And uh, you hand it over, you know To the person, you know, like the clerk or I don't know, the cashier or The person in charge yeah, they do it and you come, they give you a ticket and you come back later to pick up your clothes. That's how it works 
in the laundromats that I know. That's why I have my concerns for the Squishmallows. I'm gonna try to see if I can find any laundromats that are similar to the American ones. But again, this is a backwards town, so uh, I don't really have high hopes. But I'm gonna try. It's like that dry cleaning, someone takes care of the laundry. Yeah, exactly. So you see, uh, Ron Cat, uh, Juan Calcetin here is a fellow Mexican, so he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Laundromats don't work like in the US. I have seen them in movies and series. Yeah, you pay and you go to the machine, you wash your own clothes and that's not how we do it. Also, you know, other things that are not the same, uh, you know, like Felix Wright or Law and Order or any cops or... Uh, court movies that thing that whole concept of you know standing before a judge and a jury and you know orally presenting you know your testimony evidence and that you know american style uh, litigations up until like 2019 i think that wasn't a thing in mexico and I think that it has shocked many tourists that find up out about that. Yeah, it didn't work like that. Trials in Mexico were basically lawyers writing uh, complex documents back and forth. But, you know, it was always like that, you know, like going to the court, handing documents over, leaving, coming back when they give you a response. Yeah, the whole thing about, you know, like, OBJECTION! Hold it! And all that. Yeah. They only implemented that very recently in Mexico. <laughs> Where he met Bart the longer man when he couldn't decide what detergent he wanted. Yes, I remember that episode. <laughs> Hola Shui What am I streaming for? Well, I am streaming for Godzilla Squishmallow <laughs> That is the goal Okay, I'm gonna show it again Okay, here is Godzilla Level 4 Squishmallow, I want to get him to level 5 But he's already a lot bigger than the others <laughs> So yeah, I'm getting money To max him out And then Jibo stole his underpants and Skinner said he could buy more And then check his wallet and said, no, I can't, I really need those Yes, I remember that episode That is probably one of the more iconic uh, Simpsons episodes Yeah, I'm also gonna try to get Edward, but you know, Godzilla is a priority because I don't know for how much longer he's gonna be in the store. So I need to max him out uh, as soon as possible. Shui, por favor, no me hagas parecer algo que no soy. Ya tenemos suficiente con lo de Reflo y Rebo. Y de hecho, he notado que mucha gente que hace cosas así cuestionables esconden su edad precisamente por, por miedo o para que no los descubran en sus fechorías. Yo por eso soy, abiertamente digo que yo ya estoy viejo. <risa> Tengo más de 30 años en este mundo, así que he visto muchas cosas. Y tan solo por mis experiencias se delata. Que nací en los noventas, así que... ¿Para qué ocultarlo? No tengo yo ningún motivo. Me 
22 días sin comer. <risa> Entendible. <risa> Does take that also apply to Mexico Court? I mean, it was a joke, uh, this is Korea. Yes, I guess it kind of applies. The thing is that the whole concept of, you know, oral trials, you know, like standing before the judge and the jury and that, for the longest time, that was just an American thing. It wasn't the reality in Mexico. Now, I think it's a reality. But also, I have never seen uh, a Mexican trial like that. I think that it's not allowed to record them. Which again, is kind of a surprise because, you know, in the US there are a lot of public trials. But I think that they can't actually record them in Mexico. In many things, you know, Mexico is, is quite conservative and especially in legal matters. Yeah, they're, they're kind of hard-headed. Like, there is this insane copyright over the national flag or the national anthem. Or, you know, the funniest thing? You know how in the US a lot of people have, you know, like, underwear with the American flag? Or even bikinis and swimsuits with the American flag? Yeah, try that with the Mexican flag in Mexico, you're going to jail. I'm not kidding. That is a federal crime. You cannot do it. They will arrest you and put you in jail if you try that. And also, you can't make like remixes or covers of the national anthem because they will take it down. That is one of the very few things that the Mexican government will actually not tolerate, you know, copyright on. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of things that don't quite work the same way in the US uh, as they do in Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, TC Korea, uh, the government is quite sensitive on copyright of the national emblems, basically. But I still find it hilarious how in the US having, you know, underwear with the flag or swimwear is seen as patriotic or exaggerated, but, you know, patriotic. And in Mexico, it's like, we don't do that here. Go to jail. I even remember that many years ago Miley Cyrus actually got in hot water because I think that she twerked on the Mexican flag or something like that and yeah the government was really pissed off about that. That makes David Flanders quote make more sense. Oh, you Americans with your due process and fair trials. Oh, you Americans with your due process and fair trials. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, one sad reality is that Mexico is heavily, I cannot stress this enough, heavily corrupted. So, yeah, due process is a joke. Fair trials, that's fiction. That's actual fiction. <laughs> yeah, trials are pretty much decided by who you are family with, who you are friends with, how much money you have. If you're friends with anyone in the upper spheres, you're fine. If you come from a rich family, you're fine. Or, you know, if you are... Uh, affiliated to the relevant political party 
and you are important enough, you are fine. Otherwise, you're screwed. Even if you're innocent, or even you, if you are, you know, uh, the demanding party, you can still lose. <laughs> there is no justice for the normal person. That's also kind of a joke. That there is an organization called Derechos Humanos, Human Rights. They really protect the criminals more than the civilians. If someone breaks into your house, first of all, in Mexico you're not allowed to bear arms. So you can't even legally defend yourself with a firearm. And secondly, even if you grab a machete or a knife or anything and you defend yourself from, you know, the person assaulting you in your home, the person who broke into your house and attacked you is still going to be seen as a victim. You're going to be seen as the aggressor. It's ridiculous, but yeah, that's how it is. It sucks. It really sucks. Even defending yourself is a crime. This is always so much easier in Mexico. <laughs> yeah! The devil has an insanely easy job in Mexico. Everything evil and everything corrupt is welcome, both by the government and the society. So, uh, yeah. The devil has it in easy mode here. And you know what? The funniest thing of all is that the places where you might actually find law-abiding people and you know very little crime and that kind of thing is probably in the small native villages those are probably the places where actually law is kind of upheld but also because it's not so much the law itself but you know traditions from much older times and also because most of Mexico's natives are like very staunch traditional uh, Catholics and that tends to go hand in hand you know with they usually abide you know by, by the Ten Commandments and, and that stuff a lot more than uh, the person in the city so in the small towns uh, sorry yeah in the small towns or villages of native peoples you will probably won't uh, you probably won't find much crime but in any cities or towns uh, yeah there's a lot of corruption at all levels that is different from the courts here it's stuff like the Simpsons that makes him like it's easy to take down someone of power. In real life, Sideshow of Bulk, when he became mayor by cheating. That would have let slide in real life. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much how it is in Mexico. And yes, this is Korea. That's why they make fun of it. And you know, as a native Mexican born, raised, and living here, I agree. <laughs> All of that is based on reality. Even Mexican movies reflect that. The problem is that they are all entirely in Spanish, and I don't think that they have subbed them in English. But even some iconic classics like La Ley de Herodes and La Dictadura Perfecta, they actually showcase the political reality of Mexico, and it kind of hurts how accurate they are. And those movies are old. I think that La Ley de Herodes is like from the 80s. And it's still accurate today. La Dictadura Perfecta is from the, like 2006, 2009, but still holds true today. <laughs> Antes del stream, sí me tomé mucho con mis cairos. <laughs>
By the way, Ron Cat, let me share with you uh, a little bit of a personal experience. In some rare instances, it is possible to take down people in power. Let me tell you, you know, I have mentioned in the past, I don't really have much of a relationship with my family beyond the walls of my house. We are kind of isolated from both branches. You know, like my mom's side, my father's side. Uh, yeah, we, we kind of do our own thing. There is a handful of cousins I do, you know, I am on friendlier terms with. And there is one who is in the education sector, just like I used to be, you know, a teacher. He is a, he was a principal and he was promoted into like a superintendent, I think. Like Superintendent Chalmers. And the thing is, uh, he was doing his rounds around various uh, rural towns uh, here in the Yucatan Peninsula where I live. And he discovered uh, a weird, corrupted uh, thing that was going on in schools. It was a little bit like a cult, but it was about Gong Ho. G U N G H O. Something like that. Gong Ho. It was some kind of weird indoctrination for students. And uh, I don't remember all the details because it was a long time ago. But yeah, it was weird, a little creepy. But most of all, it was illegal because that was not included in any official um, syllabus. You know, like the education plans or anything. This was being done under the table. And it came to light because some students sent, uh, sent videos of it to my cousin. And even some leaks on social media where they were promoting this thing. So he actually asked me for help. And let's say that together my cousin and I actually gathered enough evidence of these corrupted practices. And... We managed to, to get in contact with the local uh, Secretariat of Education. We got those people banned. <laughs> the teachers and principals that were doing that thing, yeah, they got fired. <laughs> and uh, the, the education plans were being more uh, monitored from then on. So even if it's a small victory, yes, it was possible. We took down some uh, shady things that were, were were going on in in the upper sphere uh, in the upper spheres in the education world but it helps that my cousin was in a high uh, position himself you know kind of decent enough to actually put up a fight because if it were myself alone you know a mere teacher yeah they would have paid attention to me alone so there is that it's a little story but, you know, it was a, a small win, but a win at the end of the day. <laughs> the Slash episode of 80 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the Donald Trump like guy trying to destroy their sewers still holds up today. Damn. And, you know, it's that's actually kind of even worse because Trump is still relevant today. Damn, I don't even want to imagine what would happen if that guy is, if that guy wins again the elections. Yikes! That's all I can say. Yikes for the entire world. Okay, I think I should go sell this fish and see how much I make.
Okay, they also want the soda and a cookie. All right, let's see. Let's sell the fish first. Oh god, the hater's not gonna like here. <laughs> Well, you know what? As a Mexican, it's kind of none of my business. You know, whatever the U.S. and the government do. But even then, as an outsider, I can express that. You know, it's gonna be jikes. But yeah, it's really none of my business. It's just sympathizing for the to the people that will be affected. The, you know, that's also a funny thing. That, yeah, even though on the internet they push the US political agenda, and a lot of people, even foreigners, get caught in it, and I'm like, why do we care? I am not from the US. None of these issues affect the society I live in. Why do I need to get involved? Because I have seen Mexicans getting in political debates with US people and I'm like what the hell why do you care we have our own issues to, to care about and they are much worse but here you are arguing with US people about their, their politics you know that's like going to a friend's house and arguing about what they do with their household yeah that's that's not your place At least I am aware it's not my place, so... Uh, at the end of the day, none of this really concerns me. <laughs> I mean, on a personal level. It can concern me because, you know, I have friends in the US. But I can't say that I have personal stakes on any of those matters. Because I don't. Damn, I haven't really kept up with the US news. I thought it was mostly a meme. Damn. I guess, you know, my reaction is, you know, like, when there is a group of friends, and you know that there was this one friend that was, you know, with an abusive ex-girlfriend, and he goes back to her, yeah, I think that's how I feel about American people voting for Trump. I can only feel bad for them because, yeah, they're gonna be in for quite a raid. Again, it's not really none of my business, so I can only express that sort of sympathy <laughs> as an outsider. You know, welcome to Latin American reality, because that has been the case for a very long time. Really, we always try to vote for the lesser evil. There is no good guy. There is only a less evil one. Every time, that's what every Mexican election has been. It's not... Who's gonna benefit you the most, but who's gonna screw you over the least? <laughs> yeah, it, it's sad, but that is the reality. Hello, uh, Sarah Wilson. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's in Korea. That's how it is. Let me tell you that there is even the Mexican saying, you know, uh, La Ley de Herodes, uh, Herod's Law. And 
and translated it into family friendly terms it's basically you get screwed or you get screwed that's it in a nutshell <laughs> Okay, let's see, we have... Uh, okay, I can make a uh, level 3 Godzilla. Let's go! Yeah, Rodgar, I know, that's not good at all. Okay, we have two level 4s. One level three, I need two more level threes. That's gonna take a lot of money. Well, a lot more money. Also, let me see if they have Edward. I don't think they have Edward on the, the machines. Might be on the merchant, on the merchant ship, but we'll only find out on the next Wednesday. Yeah, this is Korea. You know what? That is why we need things like video games more than ever. Reality is harsh enough, you know? Let's take a break from it. Okay, let's see if I can get enough eggs to level up. Um, what was his name? I forgot. Okay, it doesn't tell me the name, but this one I'm gonna try to level it to level two. Okay, this is going quite smoothly. <laughs> oh yeah, well I'm already halfway through. Another hamburger, okay. But first, we need to find more eggs. Let's see if there are eggs underwater. Also swimming at night 
Nice in video games. Probably not a good idea in real life. At least not at sea. You know, maybe in a private pool. Yeah, you, that should be safe. But swimming in a river or the sea at night. It even sounds a little scary. Okay, only 10 more eggs. Nine more eggs. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. At least there was another one. Okay, three more. Ah, another one disappeared. I guess another one beat the dust. Okay, 50. Okay, time to level up the bunny. But also, let's get the, the things that the game need. Let's see. Soda and hamburger. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good combination if you want to speedrun your life. Okay, let's go get the, uh, the body we're missing. Let's see. Okay, it's the one with the blue bow.
not sure if the name is supposed to be in Spanish like that or if it's translated. Because it's in Spanish it's Eden. In English I guess it would be Eden. Okay, and that is our second level two squishmallow. That is not Godzilla. <laughs> Oh wait, Eden. Eden is the name in English. All right. Okay, now we have a bunny. <laughs> Godzilla, Eden, and Cam, because Cam is the original. <laughs> Also, well, we have level 1, 2, and 4. At least Lenny died happy. <laughs> Good night, Focus team. And thank you for sticking around. <laughs> How long has it been? Almost two hours and a half. Ah, eh, that's okay. We can go for a little longer. Yeah, fishing is still the best way to make money. My eye, I'm not supposed to get putting in the. <laughs> Yeah, the thing about Lenny and his eye is also pretty iconic in Latin America. Good night, Hokkaido team. how many yields I'm catching I think that those are like the best money making fish I have access to Damn, three years in a row. <laughs> nice. You know, I, I was saying this earlier in the stream, but yeah, the fishing system is actually kind of better than in Minecraft, but you can't automate it. <laughs> well, I guess that is a way to make you play the game legitimately. <laughs> but come on. All of fishing in Minecraft was pretty crazy. I rem remember getting all kinds of insane enchantments and stuff. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be doing some dancing. Okay. <laughs> At least we checked. Sadly, it was not possible to get Edward. I heard.
heard that there's a Squishmallows market, but I haven't seen it. Where you can, you know, directly buy Squishmallows, I think, from people. <laughs> you know, Radke, that actually made me think of a meme from, I think, 2013. Like, they say, I got the moves like Jaeger, and they have a Snape from Harry Potter, you know, in a, in a sort of dancing pose. And it was basically a, a shit post. And I think that it was a joke about, you know, Jaeger, because Eren Jaeger from Shingeki no Kyojin. Okay, I think that the last thing I could do in the stream is uh, some dancing. So, you know what, let's go for it. Yeah, I think that was enough vision for a stream. <laughs> Okay, the other thing is that the volume is a little high here. Let me see if I can adjust it. Yeah, the volume is a little high here. I mean, I understand the volume would be way high in, in the real life version, but come on, I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dancing time.
Okay, wait. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I need to use the keys for this. <laughs> I can't use the controller apparently. <laughs> Three stars? Okay. Damn, I didn't hear it would do that good. Got seen, I got the moves. <laughs> Sadly, it doesn't give a lot of money, but yeah, it's fun. It's basically uh, Friday night funky. Well, without any real stakes, you know, you don't really lose anything. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. And I think that will be good enough to wrap it up here for the stream because... Yeah, I've done most things that can be done.
I'm gonna let it select randomly. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Okay, this is a little fast for me. <laughs> okay. I almost feel as if I were playing a keyboard, you know, like a musical keyboard. <laughs> but only with four keys. <laughs> yeah, watching the Squish Battles dance is 100% worth it. Well, two stars and then it was a pretty tough song, so... That's pretty alright in my book. <laughs> Can't be bopping. Alright! I'm not really familiar with the music here. <laughs> But then again, my musical taste is basically confined to epic anime soundtracks, video game soundtracks, and power metal. Mostly Nordic power metal. <laughs> so it's no surprise that I'm not familiar with modern music on most types. Okay, I can increase the volume again. <coughs> Let's see, let's go to the camp, going home, and uh, the bunny wants a burger. Okay, let's go to the general store. <laughs> okay, I can do one more song, okay. Let me just get the, the needs fulfilled.
Okay, going to the camp and going home. Well, I guess I can leave going home for like the very end. Let's just go to the camp and then go to do more s one more song. Okay, let's go do one more song. Again, let's allow RNG to choose.
two stars again. <laughs> the song wasn't so tough. I mean, as tough as the other one, but you know, still not so easy. <laughs> All right. And also watching the Squishmallows dance. <laughs> Okay, Cam wants water and Godzilla wants to go home. Somehow that feels like it should be the other way around. Godzilla should be the one to want water. one game I haven't played yet, but I will probably try it out another day, <laughs> hide and seek. <laughs> so let's just reach home. <laughs> and the money wants to fish, but sadly it's already too late. I mean, I, I can do it off stream. But at least for now, home, sweet home. <laughs> With the Squish Mellow game. Well, almost as in real life. Well, I wish the Godzilla Squish Ballon were bigger. And uh, that actually looks pretty good. Super Widget for Earth Day? Yeah, sure. I'm assuming that it's a short enough game, you know, that I can do it in one shot, so yeah. All right. Okay, so that's gonna be it for tonight. So thank you so much for sticking around. Tomorrow, presumably, is gonna be the final stream for Princess Peach Showtime. So there is that. And you know, the next week, I'm probably gonna be trying to finish Donkey Kong Country. And I really need to clear the plate, you know, the, the games that I have pending, like the Super Mario RPGs, and uh, I forgot what else. But I'm gonna check on my backlog. Okay, because I really need to get back on the Mega Man games. I still need to finish uh, the Mega Man 11 challenges, but I'm not really looking forward to that. And also Mega Man Power Up. And then, you know, properly move into the Super Nintendo games. I already did, you know, Mega Man X1, 2, and 3. Uh, I wasn't able to do them all in one city. But still, there is a bunch of ROM hacks that are interesting to try, so there is that. Yeah, uh, Ralph Cat. I can do Mario 64, but after at least I finish the Classic Saga. I need to wrap up the Classic Saga and start with the X Saga, you know, the Super Nintendo games. But yes, once I am onto the Super Nintendo games, I can also do uh, Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time, you know, iconic classics. I did kind of miss out on because I never had, I never had a 64. Yeah, so, yeah. I swear, the only game I played extensively with my limited access to a Nintendo 64 was the original Super Smash Bros. Because that was fun. And I think I told you that it was a rental place. I had to pay to play for an hour. So to make the most of it, I played Smash. <laughs> I didn't need to do much. Mario 64 is important to the downfall of Mega Man though. Remember X3 and Mario 64 came out the same year? 
Well, in that case, let me do the Super Nintendo trilogy and then I can do Mario 64. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for sticking around. And also, you know, uh, thank you, <laughs> Roundcat, for showing me this game because I didn't know that you could have, you know, all these neat mini games and the Godzilla Squish Mallow. The Godzilla Squish Mallow alone is worth it. <laughs> Good night, is Korea. Alright, guys, so have a good one, you know, whatever it is on your time zone. And see you tomorrow on the Princess Peach Showtime. Yes, it's Sleepy Mammoth time. <laughs>